Welcome to Think Out for Your Imagination. This podcast is about the imagination of me, Jennifer Purcell, and other neurodivergents and neurotypicals, and how our imagination is still vivid because we are neurodivergent, and about my imagination I used to have when I was little, and bringing it to life and sharing it with you. I hope that you enjoy this first episode and that you will be inspired to email me if you want to be interviewed about your imagination that you had when you were little. I will put my email in the podcast description for you. Good evening. So tonight's episode will be about exploring what inspires artists to create their masterpieces. The first article is titled, Who or What Inspires Artists to Create Art from Art Motivate? And we'll be using three articles today. So the first article, quote, They may be inspired by nature, their surroundings, books, they read, magazines, movies, television shows, music, travel, emotions, memories, their sketchbook, other artists, and their artworks and much more. Ideas for artworks sometimes come out of the blue when the artist least expects it. Expects it. Many artists have sketchbooks handy so ideas can be jotted down and referred to later. Some ideas happen while the artist is painting. This is why it is so important for artists to sometimes just create from, sorry, for the sake of creating. Especially those who have artists block. I am inspired by environment memories and all the talented artists I regularly feature here at our Motive 8. End quote. So, I've been fortunate to travel to 25 different countries and I've seen a lot of different art. Um, going to the Louvre in France and Paris to going to the British Museum in London, uh, in England, from going to um, the, I forget the name of the museum, but it was in Oslo, Oslo in Norway, um, from going to uh, the Sixties Chapel in Italy, and in the Vatican City, and from um, going to the um, the name of the museum that was David in Italy, but just all the art that I've seen, I think is fascinating, especially when it's a sculpture, because you can't make a mistake. If you do, you have to start all over. Um, I'm not good at painting because of having NLD, um, and if you want to learn more about NLD, you can go to my podcast, Living with Invisible Brain Challenge. Uh, where I talk all about my challenges and other people's challenges with all the um, and other invisible learning challenges as well. But the reason I'm not good at drawing is because of my visual spatial awareness with all or lack of it, I guess. Um, but I do appreciate it because it's so cool to look at, even if it's a photo of a person or something, you know, it makes me wonder how they created it and what was going through their mind when they were painting it or sculpting it or maybe it's mosaic or stained glass. It's just it's so cool to think about that. Um, anyways, the second article is titled The Innate Quest for Order and Design by Martin Bartel. But ordinary experience, most children's spontaneous drawing fall in this category, often including some aspects of number three below, natural and constructed environment. Observational work falls into this category, inner feelings and imagination, or a quest for order. So this was just... Um, end quote. This was basically just saying different kind of categories that um, children's uh, drawings fall into. And um, 
it's kind of cool to think about with what children draw usually it's pretty imaginative and um they don't usually um at some some children are very good at drawing so sometimes they're not um but it's kind of cool to see how they explain what they're drawing and be able to uh you know see if you can understand what they're just describing and if you can you know imagine it through their lens um so i think that's kind of cool the third article is uh 16 titled 16 awe inspiring abstract artists of all time by mark humes quote more than a century has passed since the emergence of abstraction and now it is essential to all discussions on contemporary art abstract art continues to inspire artists and art connoisseurs as evident from how the art form continues to flourish. The history of abstract art goes back to as early as the 19th century when the conception of abstraction or what sorry was introduced to liberate art from naturalism. Instead, its purpose was to associate with the pure substances of art such as color, tone, shape, line, composition, material, and texture. Numerous abstract artists have come forward in the past century to evolve the art of abstraction little by little, keeping in mind the expressionists who originated impressive abstract art. It would be wrong to say abstraction fundamentally changed the history of art forever. So the first artist is Hilma A.F. Clint. She, I think it's a woman. Um, oh no, sorry, it's a, it's a guy. Um, lived from 1862 to 1944. Even though men always, even though men have always been quite prominent in the field of abstraction, the history of abstract art begins with a Swedish, oh, sorry, it was a woman, Swedish woman named Hilma A.F. Klint. Sorry, Hilma. Hilma A.F. Klint is considered to be the founder of abstract painting. She was a part of an art organization created by her and four other young women called The Five. This group aimed to practice the importance of making contact with the high spirits that's primarily why her radiant paintings, which often resemble geometrical and random diagrams, represented unique and complex spiritual ideas. Interesting. Her technique of automatic and spiritual abstract art was later adopted and associated with Andre Breton and Surrealists. The second artist, Wazily Konatsky, lived from 1866 to 1944. Although Wazley Konatsky, how do I say that wrong, sorry, shadowed figurative art before 1913, he was among the first painters to pursue the path of abstract art. According to him, art should be independent of the external world's observations and colors, should be separated from all obvious references purely based on psychological sorry, psychophysical influences. Wasley Kandinsky was not just an artist, but also a mystic art theorist and physicist. Moreover, moreover like Hilma A. F. Clint, he believed in spiritualism. His renowned series of works titled Impressions, improvis Improvisations, and Compositions is a spiritualistic depiction of highly stylized mont mountainous scenery that vanishes into the clouds. And the third artist is Pete Mondrain, who lived from 19, sorry, 1872 to 1944. Um, Piet Mondrain, a Dutch abstract expressionist, has always been associated with modern art as his various styles and techniques were highly influenced by 
Cubanism and post-Expressionism. He was immensely motivated by a desire to attain a spiritual commun commune with the divine, which is why his art took distinct directions throughout his life to achieve this established goal. However, after 1913, Mandrain settled on the style he is greatly known for to this day, de stili, meaning the style. The most interesting fact about his work was that he always used primary colors in his paintings. He believed that modern art would evolve into a futuristic language that would be entirely based on primary colors, dynamic tension, and flatness of forms. <clears throat> the fourth artist is Vincent Willem van Gogh, lived from 1853 to 1890. Although he was not famous in his time, Vincent Wilman van Gogh was an extraordinary Dutch post-impressionist painter whose artworks were greatly appreciated after his death. He had beautifully and delicately stored his life's traumas in his now-celebrated art pieces through the expressive usage of vibrant colors. Van Gogh's most famous painting is Starry Night. It holds a special place in the history of art because when Van Gogh painted this master masterpiece, he had been struggling with erratic behavior at an asylum. The painting depicts how he poured out all his emotions into a canvas, making something psychologically disrupting into an immaculate and appreciative art piece. I've seen some of his artwork. It is really exquisite. I've seen Starry Night. I've also seen The Scream. Um, I can't remember if I've seen more than that, but it's really cool. It, both of those are in the Louvre in Paris. I mean, he could spend days in the Louvre in Paris, France, and not be able to see everything. I haven't seen everything there, and I've been there... I've been to France five times. I think I've been to the Louvre twice. Wow. Okay, so the fifth artist is, and sorry if I mispronounce these names. Some of these names are hard to say. Kazmiri Mavlik, who lived from 1878 to 1935. Kazmiri Mavlik, a Russian avant-garde artist and art theorist, are one of the most, are one of the world famous abstract impressionists whose pioneering artworks and theories played an essential role in developing non-objective paintings in the 20th century. He also invented the conception of supremacism, an art movement that solely focused on primary geometrical forms, including lines, squares, rectangles, and circles, expressed in a limited color palette. Malvik's work encouraged many other artists to transition from natural resources to beauty and highlight emotions and spiritually based on an individual's feelings. His most influential art pieces such as Blank Square, sorry, Black Square, created in 1915, and Supremist Composition White on White, created in 1918, inspire young abstract artists to this day. Sixth artist is Paul Keeley, who lived from 1879 to 1940. Um, Paul Keeley was a German-Swiss painter whose art style was highly influenced by abstraction movements such as the Expressionism, Surrealism, and Cubanism. He was well known for his technique of combining the ideas of geometric abstraction with lyrical art. Keeley also worked with Wasley Kanatsky on his vision theory, which thoroughly stated and explained the rules of symmetric harmony in abstraction. In the early 1900s, Keeley broke out of the traditional representation of objects in abstraction, replacing it with partly recognizable content due to the massive, 
due to the massive change he brought to the world of art, his work was also criticized by abstract artists who believed and practiced the hidden concepts of art and design. Excuse me. Um, seventh one, Pablo Picasso. I'm sure you guys heard of that one before. He lived from 1881 to 1973. Pablo Picasso, sorry, Picasso, is a world-renowned Spanish painter, sculptor, theater designer, and ceramicist who spent most of his life engaging with art on a level many can only dream of. Although Pablo Picasso's art has always been associated with Cubanism, his technique and composition mostly relied on pure abstraction, making reality as uh, making reality a staring. Sorry, I'm tongue tied. Making reality a starting base in his abstract art, he worked his way up by imprinting abstract appearance in the form of geometrical designs on the canvas. His work is highly appreciated by artists of the past and the present, as his paintings are represented among the best in the art galleries even now. <clears throat> Number eight, Luabuv Papuva, lived from 1899 to 19. 1924. Next on the list of awe-inspiring artists is a Russian avant-garde artist and designer, Lubov Papuva. Sorry, in her period, Bol Bolivism greatly embraced gender equality. Um, considering this fact, it was not surprising when several women took a stand and partook in the early Soviet abstraction practices. Lubuva Papuva among them. Papuva traveled widely and investigated numerous influential art techniques and beliefs to learn from diverse paintings styles. However, the ones that interested her the most were the ancient Russian Ionic art pieces sorry, iconic art pieces and works by 15th and 16th century Italian painters. She was also one of the first female pioneers to practice a modern art movement that arose in the early 20th century, Cubo Futurism. Number nine, Mark Rothok lived from 1903 to 1966. Mark Rothok is one of the, the is one of those names that always come up when there is talk about abstract art. He was an American painter who holds the title of the most famous post-World War II abstract impressionist worldwide. Rothok's refusal to copy nature and fill his canvas with any vibrant shades is what made his work distinctly unique from others. Because of him, Many other abstract expressionists were encouraged to cut their ties with traditional painting techniques and indulge in the beauty of black and white. In short, Rothok's work, works were an exemplary influence on the development of monochrome painting. Throughout history, Mark Rothok's paintings have been interpreted by several modern um, time artists in different terms of light and architecture even after such a long time his impressive artwork still takes the audience on a spiritual and emotional journey who understand the con the concept and composition of art design thoroughly um, Okay, number 10, so we have six left. Urshili Gornke, sorry, Gornke, lived from 1904 to 1948. Urshili Gornke was an American Armenian abstract artist who influenced, delivered, and contributed to the field of abstraction on groundbreaking terms. He was 
among the most renowned painters throughout and after his life, along with Mark Rothoko, William de Cooley, and Jackson Pollock. Borky's artwork represents the suffering, troubles, and massive losses he experienced in his life, ultimately leading to his suicide in 1948. However, he is still remembered and remains one of the best abstraction expressionists whose paintings influence modern artists even now. Number 11, William Day Queen. From 1904 to 1997. Next in line is a Dutch, is a Dutch American artist, expressionist William de Kooning. He was particularly known for his action painting, abstract expressionism, a painting technique where he, where the paint is dribbled and splashed rather than carefully brushed or stroked on the canvas. Kooning's paintings from the 1930s and early 1940s were based on geometrical shapes and radiant colors showing the influence of his friends circle that consisted of several renowned artists including but not limited to Piet van Brain, Arsley Gorky, Mark Rothock, excuse me, and Pablo Picasso. Inspired by Mark Rothock, William de Kooning also dedicated a few years from 1946 to 1949 to creating a series of black and white paintings. Number 12, Jackson Pollock. Okay, that's an easy name to say. 1912 to 1956, Jackson Pollock was an American painter widely known for his style and technique of splashing liquid household paint onto any horizontal surface or line canvas and making exceptional abstract art out of it. This is the same art movement that Kooning and Rosa followed in the majority of their paintings as well. The signature drip art pieces by Pollock were especially great between the 1940s and early 1950s. The American painter dealt with alcoholism for most of his life, which is why his painting also shows a volatile volatile and reclusive behavior quite prominently. In 1956, he died in an alcohol-related car accident in which he was driving under the influence. Okay, number 13. Annas Martin. Um, from 1912 to 2004. Dennis Martin was an American Canadian painter who introduced the concept of minimal art and abstraction. It is an extreme form of abstract art in which the art pieces are composed of geometrical shapes like squares and rectangles. The purpose of minimal art is to focus on the elemental aspect of an object rather than an individual's artist's expression. Martin not only played a, a significant role by incorporating the art of minimalism in abstraction, but she also remains a constant influential personality for other painters, graphic designers, and arch architects because she is fascinated with artful geometric designs and muted color palette practices. Number 14, I put you Roy Fox. Lincolnstein, who lived from 1923 to 1997. The American artist Roy Fox Lincolnstein, that's I think they call it Lincolnstein right now, that's how I know how to say that, is one of the leading figures to start combine pop art with abstraction. His early work was typically based on the understanding of modernist, modernist painting and Cubanism. However, in the early 1960s, he became inspired and came up with an unusual combo of pop and modern modernity, um, which relied on the traditional abstract code. And Lichtenstein also reproduced 
several masterpieces by Mardane and Picasso, sp splashing the twist of pop in their art pieces and making them work to be remembered throughout art history. All right, number 15. One more out of this. Ellsworth Kelly, from 1923 to 2015. While abstract expressionism was still at its peak in the 1950s, Ellsworth Kelly brought along a new monochromatic canvas technique that was stylistically and inherently distinct from the paint pretty slashers, including William J. Cooney and Jackson Pollock. Although his artwork was an open exploration between color, forms, textures, and geometric shapes, he was widely criticized for the hard edged paintings of minimalistic techniques that demonstrated an unassuming and individual perspective of art to the audience. Kelly was also known for using all bright colors in his abstract art, unlike the other expressionists of his time. Last one, Sam Neely, born in 1933. So, why? Wow, okay. Sam Neely is one of the renowned African American painters who pursued and perfected the art of abstract abstraction throughout the 1950s and early 1960s. In his early days, he was instantly noticed for his paintings on unstretched swags of fabric that he used as a canvas. Although many artists have implemented this drapes technique in recent years, it mainly remains associated with Gilman's impressive signature artworks. Each of the abstract artists mentioned in this article has left an absolute and explanatory, sorry, exemplary mark in the abstraction history that can be replaced Sorry, that can't be replaced by any other. Just as they have all played significant roles in slowly by surely evolving the techniques of art, it will progress further as today's artists keep their legacy alive. Okay, end quote. That was the last article. Sorry, that was kind of a long episode. Um, so... I hope you enjoyed listening to that and you learned something new about how artists are inspired. I will include the links um, to the articles in the description. If you want to go to them and read more, you can. Um, good night. I hope that this week's episode of Think Out for Your Imagination brought new ideas to your mind and reminded you of when you were little and would have imagine and pretend and play with your friends or yourself and create games in your mind and you know just be just be a kid and have fun and you know what it's like to dream it and do that and be able to um, be a little kid again and you know believe in things like fairy tales and mermaids and um, wonderful creatures. I will talk to you next Thursday.